I'm Peter Schlegel, professor of urology at Weill Cornell Medical Center. What we'd like to introduce you to is our concept of a multidisciplinary prostate cancer team. This will involve specialists from a series of different specialties, medical oncology, radiation oncology, urology, and others who are all going to work together to provide you more information about your diagnosis and treatment options. We know that having a diagnosis of prostate cancer can be very challenging. It's particularly difficult when you've had no symptoms, no evidence to yourself that you had prostate cancer, and no reason to understand why you may have developed this condition. By providing a series of different specialists together, we can both talk about all of the treatment options that are possible and also introduce you to the opportunity of entering clinical trials. Opportunities that are all based on what your specific condition is. Your treatment, your options are going to be personalized for your individual situation. Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Hugh, the director of the LaFrac Center for Robotic Surgery. Here at New York Presbyterian Wall Cornell Medicine, we offer the wide breadth of prostate cancer therapies ranging from robotic surgery to minimally invasive treatments such as high-intensity focused ultrasound cryotherapy, as well as cutting-edge radiation therapies and chemotherapy. Our goal is to match your individual biology with these tailored treatments so that we meet your individual needs uh, from the full spectrum of care. Our team takes a comprehensive approach to ensure that your individual needs are met as well as matching the treatment to the biology of your tumor. As part of our virtual multidisciplinary prostate cancer clinic, you'll be scheduled visits with a wide range of experts on our team in the comfort of your home and receive individualized care to navigate the complexities of prostate cancer care. The multidisciplinary nature of our virtual prostate cancer clinic ensures that you get an accurate diagnosis through second opinion interpretation of outside pathology, radiology imaging, to match this to the best treatment for the biology of your prostate cancer. My name is Dr. Douglas Scher, professor of urology here at Weill Cornell Medicine, New York Presbyterian Hospital. I'm the clinical director of urologic oncology. Prostate cancer is the classic disease that requires a team approach to its care. Uh, here at Weill Cornell Medicine, New York Presbyterian Hospital, I think we've really mastered the art of multidisciplinary care as it relates to prostate cancer. Included in this approach is an expert team of, of areas to include both urologic oncology, medical oncology, pathologic oncology, radiation oncology, alongside a, a coordinated effort at precision medicine. And I think we're able to tackle prostate cancer disease from multiple angles in this sense to cover all bases for a patient's needs. And this is to go well beyond even the hardcore sciences of disease, but we also cover areas of uh, experimental uh, treatments, clinical trials, as well as a uh, focused effort to look at the patient as a whole and providing holistic care in the treatment of this disease to include Reiki, therapeutic massage, and relaxation techniques to really put the patient at ease throughout the entire entirety of their care. As part of our multidisciplinary care approach, uh, the our multidisciplinary tumor board is really at the cornerstone of this treatment. Every single case that comes through this center, whether it come through, comes through at, here at, at our New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell campus, our Brooklyn campus, or our Queens campus, all these cases are presented at our multidisciplinary tumor board. At this meeting, we have the benefit of having absolute experts in every field of urologic oncology to approach every case really to, to provide a comprehensive platform of treatment alternatives. I think at this, we then present our findings of the multidisciplinary care clinic to our patients, um, and I think they appreciate not having to travel to multiple visits, multiple centers, and everything's done right here for them. As part of this uh, tumor board meeting, we're able to provide a collaborative care platform for every patient's disease. In this, we approach each disease to see what clinical trials may be uh, amenable for that patient. In addition, we look at systemic treatments to treat their disease, local treatments, including surgery and radiation therapy, 
and we're able to review everybody's pathologic slides to ensure that we're dealing with the exact disease that we think we're dealing with. Hello, my name is Dr. David Nannis, and I'm a professor of medicine and urology at Weill Cornell Medicine and New York Presbyterian. I will be providing a brief overview of the prostate and prostate cancer. The prostate is a gland located underneath the bladder in front of the rectum. It plays an important role in male reproduction by producing fluid that carries sperm. As shown here in this diagram, the prostate is located underneath the bladder and in front of the rectum. It plays a major role in reproduction by producing fluid that helps carry sperm out through the urethra. Prostate cancer, like other cancers, is an abnormal growth of normal cells, in this case, normal prostate cells. Most prostate cancers are adenocarcinomas or cancers of gland-like cells. In general, prostate cancers tend to grow slowly over many years, but some can be aggressive and spread to other organs both locally, like local lymph nodes, as well as spread to bone, liver, and lung. Prostate cancer is typically diagnosed by a prostate biopsy. The prostate tissue is then examined in the pathology department underneath a microscope, and the cells are given a grade which is really a degree of how aggressive they look. This Gleason grade goes from one to five, with one or two looking the most normal, and five looking more aggressive and abnormal. The two most common grades are then added together to give a Gleason score. So if you have one area that's mostly three and another area that's mostly four, you'd have a Gleason score of seven. If you had one area that was predominantly four and a second area mostly five, you'd have a Gleason score of nine and so on. Hi, I'm Chris Barbieri. I'm a urologic surgeon at Weill Cornell. I'm going to uh, discuss uh, some of the surgical options for uh, care of prostate cancer patients at Weill Cornell. The primary approach we take surgically for complete removal of the prostate or radical prostatectomy is a robot-assisted, minimally invasive approach called a robot-assisted radical prostatectomy. So what this approach entails is instead of one large incision on the lower abdomen, the way we used to do, uh, this involves several small incisions, all smaller than a, an inch, that go across the patient's abdomen. And we uh, put a camera inside through those small incisions and small instruments and are essentially doing the operation inside the body. Uh, there are multiple benefits to this approach. Um, first, uh, the improved visualization we get from the camera, which is a 3D visualization of the structures uh, around the prostate, really allows excellent magnification and excellent view of those structures. And some people think that it allows really us to improve our outcomes, particularly in terms of the nerve sparing uh, that allow patients to continue having erections after a prostatectomy. In addition, it's very well proven that robot-assisted radical prostatectomy is associated with less blood loss, it's associated with less pain, and it's associated with a shorter time in the hospital for men who have their prostates removed in this way. Another approach to men with cancer that is limited to their prostate is focal therapy for prostate cancer. Focal therapy is based on the principle that if the cancer is in just one area of the prostate, and it can be visualized on imaging tests like an MRI, that the, that area of the prostate may be able to dest be destroyed, destroying the cancer, while preserving the rest of the normal prostate. Now, it's important to note this is still an investigational approach. We have good reason to believe that this will work for many men, but we continue to have to prove that. There are many ways to execute this, and there are many specific types of energy that can be applied to the prostate to focally eliminate one area of cancer. These include high-intensity ultrasound, which is called HIFU, uh, irreversible electroporation, which essentially zaps the area of the prostate in question, and cryotherapy, which freezes the area to destroy it. And so discussion with one of our surgeons here at Weill Cornell can really guide uh, each individual patient whether any of these approaches are 
right for them and for their cancer. While Cornell Medicine, we're also investigating surgical approaches to treat men whose cancer is more advanced and is spread beyond the prostate. These include minimally invasive and robot-assisted approaches to remove lymph nodes for men who have had recurrence in that area after initial treatment of their prostate cancer. It includes the removal of the prostate in men who has metastatic disease, where the cancer has spread widely beyond the prostate. These approaches are typically done on clinical trials and where we have a very careful uh, multidisciplinary approach to these patients to make sure that we are treating the entire patient and the entire scope of the cancer appropriately. An important principle that guides us here at Weill Cornell is that there is no one right answer for every man with prostate cancer. We take a very personalized approach to the treatment of each patient, really considering that patient's cancer, who that patient is as a person, what is their health status, and what are their priorities in life? What is the things that are most important to them and allow us to make decisions together in terms of how to treat their cancer. My name is Himan Shunagar. I'm a radiation oncologist at Weill Cornell Medicine, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Radiotherapy is used to treat prostate cancer in multiple settings and is widely used to treat intact prostate cancer when the prostate is in place in the post-operative setting when a patient may have a recurrence after surgery and in the metastatic setting where a patient's disease has spread away from the prostate or outside the pelvis and the patient requires radiotherapy at that juncture. Radiation actually surrounds us all the time from in the form of sunlight, microwaves, radio waves, etc. In medicine, radiation is used both diagnostically and therapeutically. Patients may be familiar with x-rays or CAT scans or PET scans, which are using diagnostic radiation to diagnose disease and determine if disease is present or the extent of disease. In radiation oncology, radiation is used as a therapeutic modality to treat prostate cancer in the intact, post-operative, or metastatic settings. Radiation can be delivered either internally or externally. Internally, a patient may undergo what is known as a seed implant or catheter implant where the radiation is implanted in the patient and the radiation is delivered from an inside-out technique. Another more common form of radiation treatment is what's considered external beam radiation treatment where the radiation is delivered from outside the patient. In external beam radiation treatment, the patient lays on a table and the radiation is delivered from outside the patient. Radiation treatment schedules can vary from a protracted regimen over the course of many weeks to a very shortened version over the course of a few days. Traditionally, radiation was delivered over the course of nine weeks of treatment. Now, we have adopted shorter treatment regimens known as SBRT, or ultra-hypofractionated radiation treatment, where treatment can be delivered in as short as five days. External beam radiation treatment is a common form of radiation where a patient lays on the table and the radiation is delivered externally to the patient, particularly to the prostate or the post-operative bed. This can take as short as 15 to 20 minutes or even 30 minutes of treatment time per day. One of the unique features at Weill Cornell Medicine New York Presbyterian Hospital is the MRI linear accelerator. This is a linear accelerator, a radiation machine that delivers radiation from outside the patient. What is unique is the real time imaging that the patient undergoes during the treatment. This is done under MRI visualization. What can happen is a patient's anatomy can change while they are undergoing treatment. The capability of this machine is to be able to stop the treatment when the target is not in place. For example, for a patient receiving SBRT in five treatments for prostate cancer, the bladder or rectum position can change from one second to the next. The machine has the ability to stop the treatment until the prostate is back in place. What this allows us is to minimize the radiation dose and the subsequent toxicity or side effects to the bladder or the rectum. Additionally, a patient's anatomy can change from one day to the next. The real-time adaptability of the MRI linear accelerator 
allows us to change our target volumes on any given day in order to maximize tumor control and minimize toxicity, particularly urinary and bowel toxicity. Traditionally, radiation treatment for prostate cancer was delivered over the course of several weeks. With improvement in understanding of prostate cancer biology and advanced imaging and technological advances, we've been able to decrease the treatment time from nine weeks down to five weeks to five days. The expectation is that we can minimize the treatment burden for patients while maintaining or decreasing the toxicity while achieving similar cancer control. Hello, my name is Cora Sternberg and I'm professor of medicine at Weill Cornell Medicine working in the genitourinary oncology department. And I'm also the clinical director of the Englander Institute of Precision Medicine. I've spent my entire career studying patients with genitourinary malignancies, in particular prostate cancer, the second most common cause of cancer in men worldwide. I've been intimately involved in developing studies with novel hormonal therapies such as abiraterone and enzalutamide and developing other new therapies for patients with prostate cancer. Most recently, I've been the principal investigator on what's called the PROSPER trial on patients with non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer. This occurs in 50 to 60,000 patients in the United States alone every year. If you think about it, that's enough to fill an entire American football stadium. And what we found in this study, which is practice changing, is that by giving hormonal therapy earlier, we can improve the time to metastases. We can, by almost two years, we can improve the time to chemotherapy even longer, and we can, most importantly, improve overall survival. I've also been involved in many studies in patients in, with all stages of prostate cancer, such as trying to improve the results on abiraterone by adding what's called an AKT inhibitor called epatosertib, and the results of this are extremely interesting. At Wild Cornell Medicine, we are evaluating novel therapies such as androgen receptor degraders, and these protocols are extremely interesting for patients who have failed, perhaps, enzalutamide or abiraterone. In my role as clinical director at the England Institute of Precision Medicine, along with my genitourinary colleagues, we are very interested in studying the genetics of our patients and their tumors. We know that if patients have germline mutations, these can have important implications, not only for our patients and their treatment, but also for their families. We also know that if we find mutations in the tissue itself of the tumor, what we call somatic mutations, we have new therapies to treat our patients, such as PARP inhibitors, for example. And we are even evaluating to even avoid androgen deprivation therapy and using these novel targeted uh, therapies for our patients. Most recently, I've been focusing with our group on hard to treat patients who after they've had castration-resistant prostate cancer, can sometimes develop what we call a more aggressive tumor called neuroendocrine-type prostate cancer. And we have new treatment strategies and several different uh, agents that we're studying, such as what we call bispecific antibodies, which increase the T cells in your own immune system, and they target the prostate-specific membrane antigen, or, pros or target other antigens that are known to be seen on neuroendocrine cells such as lung cancer, for example. At Weill Cornell Medicine, we're also looking at immunotherapy in our patients with prostate cancer. And we are known for our studies in PSMA-targeted therapies. We've been evaluating PSMA-targeted uh, antibodies, PSMA with lutetium, and PSMA with actinium. I think the most important part of working at Weill Cornell Medicine is that every week, we have a real interdisciplinary conference with oncologists, urologists, radiation oncologists, radiologists, pathologists, social workers, and we decide what is the best treatment for our patient. I think this is the best way we can really come out with the very best treatment for all of our patients here at Weill Cornell. Thank you very much.
Hi, my name is Scott Tagawa. I'm a Jew medical oncologist who works here at Weill Cornell Medicine, New York Presbyterian Hospital, in the departments of medicine and urology. I'd like to talk to you about research. Research is a topic that makes some people quite excited and some people it, it leads to some fears. We have research that includes interventional clinical trials and these are designed to come up with new treatments, whether it's a type of surgery, radiation, or a drug, designed to help the patient sitting in front of me as well as to lead to developments to help people in the future. That's one example of research. We also have what we would call correlative of research, which just may be including some data from your charts or an extra blood sample when the blood's already been going to be drawn. Or if you have surgery, maybe a little piece of the tissue designed to, um, to look for scientific advancements. This might help you, but it might not. It might just help patients in the future. Another big set of clinical trials which we have here, which I really like, are diagnostic clinical trials. So this might help improve screening or might improve uh, the knowledge about uh, a current state of a cancer in your body. For instance, we have a, a large section that's dedicated to imaging. These might include MRI or might include something like a PET scan, and these types of molecular imaging are not yet available in a, in a wide sense, but are available as part of clinical trials. For, exist, for example, a PSMA PET, which might help in the diagnosis um, or location and characterization of your tumor. So th that's one example, and it's uh, very comforting to me for me to know that I am able to offer these for my patients and work very closely with my colleagues here. Hello, my name is Anna Molina and I am a genital urinary medical oncologist at New York Presbyterian Wall Cornell Medicine. We understand how a diagnosis of prostate cancer can affect your life as well as the lives of your loved ones. Your team includes other healthcare professionals that can help in the management of symptoms, uh, also psychosocial issues, rehabilitation, and nutrition during and after your prostate cancer therapy. At New York Presbyterian Wall Cornell Medicine, we treat the whole person. You'll have access to the full resources of our top-ranked academic medical centers, including specialists from all areas who collaborate with our cancer experts to provide comprehensive care. Some of these services include fertility and sexual health uh, experts, access nurses, genetic counselors, registered dietitians, oncology consumer health librarians, and complementary medicine practitioners. At New York Presbyterian Wall Cornell Medicine, we treat the patient as a whole. We hope that you found this video and this information to be of benefit to you and helpful in guiding you in how you could be further evaluated and consider treatment options here. At New York Presbyterian Weill Cornell Medical Center, we are dedicated to providing you the best care that can be provided. We want to support you and your care going forward.